Hello, Applied English. So I'm actually here live with my third hour virtual class. Everyone say A. Hey. A. Hey, there you go. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you guys can, can hear that over screen a little bit there. Um, I had to film live with my third hour class because I was having some recorder issues actually earlier today. You may notice that I don't have my webcam up. That's for two reasons. One is that it wasn't working. Uh, but for two, it actually does help when we're reading our ebook. It allows you to see the screen a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to skip prayer for today. I hope you guys don't judge me for that too much. I do expect this video to go a little bit longer. Um, plus, I'm just here with my third hour class anyway, and I want to make sure I'm maximizing their time. Um, my, I'll, I'll say a little mini prayer for us here, just that the Lord Jesus may bless our time together as we dive into a graphic novel today. Our objective for today is to comprehend and analyze a graphic novel. Comprehend means to understand. Analyze means to uh, dive deeper into the meanings of it, looking at the artistry, looking at the text to figure out themes. What we're doing today is uh, reading our way through book one of Beowulf. It might seem like a lot to read, but one thing to note is that a lot of book one is a giant fight scene. So we'll be able to fly through those pages a little bit, but I will be stopping to point out some artistic details. Um, I'll also lead you through today's uh, study guide assignment too. So I might be pausing my reading from time to time to point out some study guide questions for you guys to follow along. It is wise for you to open up the book one study guide assignment right now that should be available for you in Schoology. You might as well open it as you watch this video. It's the same is true for you guys third hour, those of you who are with me today. Um, it's wise for you to open up your study guide because we'll see how much we can get answered together as we're inside of our lesson meeting today. You guys should know on our Monday mini lesson upcoming for us, a little bit of grammar. I want to teach you guys the basics of quotation marks on Monday. Quotation marks are really nice to know how to use when we're writing things like paragraphs and essays. They're not super difficult, so we'll cover the basics while we're virtual on Monday. Like I said a moment ago, book one study guide, you should open up in a new tab. I'm gonna do that real quick here. So book one SG is book one study guide right here. We have different study guide questions for all three books of Beowulf. It is wise to read through the questions first before we uh, dive into the text and see what we can answer. And you know what, while mine is loading up, I wanna show you a couple more tools. In the day 36 folder, you'll see two different ways to read. Beowulf book one reading is, is a video of me reading. I did buy the ebook for Beowulf, so it's, it's easy for me to teach from up on screen. But I've also, and this is really Mrs. Tan uh, did this for me. It was very kind of her to scan in the book in color. But I, we do have every page of book one uploaded here in a media album. What this allows you to do is to pop in and by clicking the previous and next buttons in your media album, it allows you to see every page and follow along as well. Um, it's not the, the most ideal way to read in the world. And once again, I'll be doing this on video screen as well. Uh, but if you'd like to read at your own pace or double back to any uh, page you like, you do have access to that here in Beowulf Book One pages. I'll do my best to point them out to you as we're reading. Please note, as you're writing your own answers, it says, please answer each question in complete sentences. Number one, after King Shield died, what did his people do with his body? I'll start from the top so you guys can identify that. Some of our questions are gonna be art alerts, or we're specifically looking at the artwork, the illustrations of this graphic novel. I usually give page numbers with those as well. On page three, what material is the full page panel designed to resemble? I'll be sure to point out which page is page three as we're reading. I wanna know from you guys what material is it designed to look like? Number three, who is the evil guest who attacks Hrothgar's hall? The hall is called Heirat, as we'll see. How long did he terrorize this building? Number four, another art alert. How do the perspectives on pages 11 and 12 depict Beowulf? How do they depict everyone else? Think of perspectives like camera angles if you are filming this like a movie. Number five, why does Beowulf vow to fight Grendel with his bare hands? And number six, describe the swimming contest Beowulf and Brekka had in their youth. There is a paragraphing question as well. We'll take a look at that later. I just wanna get reading through this chapter first here. So keep these questions in mind as we read. I'm pulling up the ebook right here. I'm just gonna start from the top on page one. I think we covered this a little bit in our last lesson video, but let's just read through book one of Beowulf. 
In the days of old, the house of the Schildings ruled in Denmark. The first of the line was Schild, whom men called son of the sheaf, because he came, no man knew whence, as a little child in a boat with a sheaf of corn, floating on the waves. He grew to be a mighty man of valor, subduing the robber tribes that prowled the seas and compelling all nations round him to pay tribute. A good king was he, and great, and God gave him a son for the comfort of his people. For he knew in what evil a nation stands that lacks a king to rule over it. Now the time came that King Schild must die, for he had grown old and feeble. So they carried him to the sea, and there stood his ship, newly adorned, with sails set as for a voyage. There in the middle, hard by the mast, did the comrades of Schild the king lay down their dead lord with many precious things. Never was a ship adorned in more comely fashion, with warriors' gear and weapons of war, battle axes and coats of mail. With empty hands he had come into this world, but he departed into the land of the waters with a king's treasure. And the helm they set free, so that the sea might take him wheresoever it would. I think we can answer a study guide question, right, Third Hour? Yeah, which one, which one, Adriana? Yeah, so the first question, after King Shill died, what did the people do with his body? Go back to our text right here if you need to look at it. Mm -hmm. Yep, so this is called a Viking funeral. Um, they placed him in a boat, and what do they do with that boat? Yeah, they, I'm going to say they placed him in a decorated boat and send him, send him out to sea. This is an example of what's called a Viking funeral, right? Maybe, you, maybe you've seen this in a movie or a TV show where they put the dead body in a boat, they load it up with treasures. Sometimes they set the boat on fire and then they, they send it out to sea. That's just how they did their funerals for warriors back in those days. Once again, this is one of the oldest texts in English literature. Um, I wanted to model that one for you just because I want you to write incomplete sentences. So uh, if you're answering that question now, just make sure you're doing it in complete sentences. Um, you can use my sentence if you like. Just wanted to do that as a model for you. Again, I'm recording this too. So if you ever need to go back and watch this video, you absolutely can. I do want to keep us going just so that we don't run out of time here. Page three. I think there's a study guide question about the art on this page. King Schild, having thus gone to his place, Baal, his son, reigned in his stead for many years, even unto old age, and was followed in turn by his son, Haalfdain the Great. To him were granted four strong children, Haragar, Hrothgar, Halga, and Irsa. I'll do one more page, then we'll look back at another study guide question here. Notice that this is where book one officially starts. You guys can think of those first three pages as like a movie introduction, right? Where you hear the narrator's voice and you've got that sweeping camera that goes over the landscapes and it shows the funeral, um, shows the boat going out to sea. The, uh, that narrator is giving us context, giving us background about the kind of people who are in this story. Book one, Hrothgar excelled in all that had gone before him in valiant deeds. It came into his mind that he would build a banquet hall greater than man had ever heard tell of. And as he purposed, so he did. Quickly was the hall set up, and when it was finished, it was the stateliest in all the lands of men. A home of peace towering high. Nor did any that beheld it dream that there should ever be strife within. Notice that the panel there is giving us, uh, it's showing them building up this hall, this, uh, this stately, this impressive building. Let's see if we can maybe answer that next study guide question while we're here. It's an art alert, right? This is page three where my cursor is right now. Um, what does the question say? Can I maybe have someone read the question out loud? Yeah, let me maybe zoom in on this page for you real quick here. Do, nope, one page. So this is page three. I've just isolated it for us real quick. Let me zoom in just a little more. Let's go to maybe 150%. Here we go. So. As you guys look at this page, what do you guys think it's designed to look like? Okay, I like that. I, I see wood particularly, but I like that idea of leather, right? This page looks like it's been carved, right? Let's maybe frame that in complete sentences real quick. Page three, what materials?
full page panel designed to resemble. Um, it looks like it is carved into wood or leather. I've never thought about it being carved in the leather before, but that would fit the time frame as well. That's an artistic decision that Gareth Hines made um, to kind of bring out the, the tone, the emotions of this story. It looks like it's carved into wood or leather. I want to see if we can finish off this story or finish off book one in these next 15 minutes. I'll try to go rather quickly, but still support you guys. Hey, Arat, this hall was named, and many an hour the clansmen spent there in cheer and revel till there came an evil guest within its walls. Grendel was his name, and he dwelt among the moors and fens. He was of an accursed race, and he had long lived in jealous exile from the lands of men. I suppose I should give a trigger warning on some pages in this text. Um, the original epic poem for Beowulf is super violent. Obviously, it doesn't have images, but the poetry kind of tells you what's happening. Um, we're about to see some bloody stuff. For those of you who are kind of sensitive to blood, let me ask you guys this, though. What looks interesting about the blood on this page that my cursor's on? Yeah, all throughout book one in Beowulf, Gareth Hines decided to, um, to depict the blood as being black in color instead of red. What else is black on this page? Like a deep jet black color. Yeah, what, what's his name? Grendel, absolutely. So scholars have no idea who or what Grendel may have been. The text describes him as being a monster and doesn't really give much description. This is how Gareth, uh, Gareth Hines decided to depict Grendel, almost like this, this giant, demonic, very, very, very dark kind of figure. Notice that he's the same exact color as the blood. Grendel searched out his, this lofty hall, and there he ruled in rage, devoured all who dared abide there, until empty stood the hall at night. Look how he towers over everyone else in that image right there. He just manhandles everyone. So it happened for the space of 12 winters, no man dared abide in the hall for fear of Grendel. Warrior or youth, it mattered not, all were his prey. Great was the grief of the king, and oft did the warriors and nobles gather, but neither sacrifice nor counsel availed. Now notice, on these pages, there's some interesting things going on artistically. Um, let me ask you guys, what's maybe the first thing that sticks out to you on this page that my cursor's on right now? Sure, so the fire sticks out. A, a lot of the colors in, in book one are very plain. There's a lot of blacks and browns and grays. So that red and orange really sticks out. You can see these Viking funerals, these boats lit on fire. What else is really interesting about the artwork on that page? What do you guys see reflected in the water? Yeah, and notice that Gareth Hines decided to name all the stars by their constellations too. Um, we're gonna we're gonna see that quite a bit within um, within book one right here. I will ask you to do some writing about an artistic detail that sticks out to you. That might be a good option because we're gonna see that some more. Speaking of artwork, we do have a page of nothing but artwork following up here. So we have to kind of fill in the blanks. Notice that we have a boat arriving. Let me ask you guys, who do you guys think this is arriving by boat? Who haven't we met in Beowulf yet? Yeah, we haven't we haven't met the, the title character yet, right? This is Beowulf arriving by boat. Ooh, our first sound effect as well. Boom, right? We we get the sound of these of these doors uh, bursting wide open there. Certain men are newly come, my lord, far across the sea from the land of the Geats, and the name of their chief is Beowulf. They make petition that they may speak with thee, and I would counsel that thou refuse not their request, for their gear is that of worthy men, and their chief is a noble prince. Notice how huge Beowulf is compared to this guard. I knew him well when he was yet a boy. His father was Ejtheow, to whom Hrethel the Geat gave his only daughter in marriage. And now that he has grown to man's estate, he has come to visit us, and indeed it is well. For they who carried our gifts over the seas to the Geats say that he has in his grip the strength of 30 men. Hail to thee, King Hrothgar. I am Beowulf, kinsman to King Hijalak. Many deeds of note have I done in my life. And now the reports of the monster Grendel have brought me to your land. 
For strangers from over the sea have told us how this fair hall stands empty as soon as evening falls. Twas my comrades who put the thought in my heart, for they had seen my valorous deeds, how I had conquered the foes of my country and brought the race of giants low and slain monsters both on sea and on land. So now I am come, my lord king, to fight single-handed against this Grendel. More have I heard that the monster dire in his wrath has no regard for weapons. Therefore, I shall carry neither sword nor shield nor coat of mail to this battle. With the grip of my hands only will I confront this enemy, struggling with him life for life. But who shall live and who shall die? Let it be as God shall will. I doubt not, O king, that if he has his way, he will devour the champions of the Geats, even as he has those of the Danes. The Danes are, are King Hrothgar's people who live in Heorot. As for me, thou wilt not need to lay my body in the earth and raise a mound over it, for he will surely carry it off to the moors where he dwells and devour it there. A lot of vocab words in there. Only I pray thee, send back to my king Hidgelot my armor, for it came to me by inheritance, and Wayland, the smith of the gods, wrought it in the old time, but that which fate has ordered shall come to pass. I think there's a tricky study guide question we can answer right there. It is number... It's number five. Why does Beowulf uh, vow to fight Grendel with his bare hands? There's a couple of possible options for this one. I'm curious to see if any of you caught a detail there that explains why Beowulf um, wants to fight Grendel with no weapons. That's a great answer, so that's a possibility. I'll put like a one by there. He wants God to decide who wins. He wants it to be a fair fight. Does anyone maybe have a different interpretation of this one? Yep. Another one. He, you might say Grendel does not have any weapons. There's another way to interpret that line as well. I'll put a big or right there. Or um, weapons do not work on Grendel. There's two ways to interpret that line about how he has, how he, um, what's the line? I got to find it. That he has no regard for weapons. That could mean that he does not use a weapon, or it could mean that weapons don't hurt him. Either way, they're, they're both reasons why Beowulf might or wants to fight Grendel barehanded. Now, mind you, they mentioned that Grendel's been bursting into this hall and killing people for 12 years now, and Beowulf saying, you know what? I'm going to fight him barehanded. Right? Notice how, notice how different and strange that is. I know we skipped a couple of vocab questions, or sorry, a couple of study guide questions. Those are ones I'm gonna ask you to try on your own. Um, I will point out pages 11 and 12 for you right here. They are, they're the two pages where Beowulf shows up. The one that starts with boom, right? So notice the camera angles. You've got this camera angle pointed up towards the, towards the ceiling. You've got Beowulf's shadow here as well. You also have a camera angle pointed down towards the floor right below that. The question there is, is uh, what kind of effect does this have? How does this depict Beowulf? compared to the people around him. Often have my warriors boasted, this is, this is King Hrothgar speaking here, merry with their drink, that they would stand up, sword in hand, against the monster. But when morning came, lo, the hall was bespattered with gore, the benches reeked with blood, and I was the poorer by many brave men. But I pray thee, hardy heroes, sit down to the feast. There's a, class, there's a classic Viking feast going on here. And then this jerk stands up. This is this guy's unverth. We're not gonna like him very much. Art, I'm gonna try to give him a snobby voice. Art thou that Beowulf who contended with Brecca in swimming on the open sea? Twas indeed foolhardy, yet no man could turn you from your adventure. Seven days and nights we toiled, one against the other, but in the end he prevailed, for he had the greater strength. The waves cast him ashore on the on the land of the Hartharim. Where, whence he journeyed back to his own kingdom. So I predict a worse adventure for thee, though doubtless thou art a sturdy warrior in the shock of battle, if thou dare to await Grendel's coming through the watch of night. Unferth is basically saying, Beowulf, you're a poser. You're a fake. Here's what Beowulf says. Surely the ale can has wrought with thee, friend Unferth, that thou hast said such things about Brecca. But I say to thee that in buffeting the waves of the sea, I have more strength than any man under heaven. Wow. Now hear the truth. 
This Brecca and I, in our boyhood, were wont to talk of this, how we would test ourselves against the sea, and we made agreement to contend against the other. So we swam, each holding in one hand a sword to defend himself against the monsters of the sea. Not one went farther than I could he swim, nor could I outpace him. So for the space of five days and five nights we swam together, but on the sixth day the floods parted us, for the wind blew mightily from the north, and the waves were rough. So was I left alone, and the rage of the sea monsters was roused against me, but my coat of mail stood me in good stead against their attacks. In grimace grip did one great beast seize me and drag me to the bottom of the sea. Yet strength was given me to pierce the monster with my sword, and I slew him. There he is killing a giant octopus at the bottom of the ocean. And so it came that I slew with my sword nine monsters of the deep and escaped with my life. Never was a man more hardly pressed by the waves of the sea or put into greater peril of death. Spent with swimming, I was finally cast up by the tide upon the land of the Finns. I have heard of no such deeds as done by thee, unfirth son of Etchla. Someone, throw, someone throws a drinking horn at him right there, just because Beowulf clowned him. Lady, when I embarked on this voyage with my fellows, I swore that I would do this deed or perish, die, at the hands of Grendel. And to this I am bound. I will fulfill my oath and work the will of your people or meet my death in this great hall. Never since I first laid my right hand to the sword and bore the shield on my left, have I given this hall of the Danes to any man to keep, and now I give it in trust to thee. Do thou keep it as befits its grace. Be of good hope. Be valiant. Watch for the foe. Let me ask you guys, what vocab word do we see right at the end of that quote? Valiant. Be, be courageous. Be brave, right? Um, I'm actually going to stop us there for a little bit. These next like 27 pages are all fight scene, no text. I'm actually going to make a separate video of this because it's going to cover the next part of your study guide. I think there are maybe a few study guide questions we didn't go back and look at. Um, number three, who is the evil guest who attacks Hrothgar's hall and how long did he terrorize this building? Um, I'm sure you guys can tell easily that, um, that Grendel is the monster who attacks the hall. did this for 12 years. It doesn't say how many times within those 12 years, but he did it off and on for 12 years. That's, that's quite a problem. Number four, I want you to try it on your own. Just We looked at that a little bit on pages 11 and 12. How do those perspectives, how do those camera angles depict Beowulf, especially compared to everyone else? The number six, the swimming contest Beowulf and Brecca had in their youth. The main thing we want to emphasize there is how impossible this swimming contest is, right? Beowulf and Brecca raced across the ocean for six days. Mind you, it's not possible to swim across the ocean for six days. Um, we should also note that um, maybe during the race, Beowulf killed nine monsters at the bottom of the sea. I hope you can see why this uh, story is treated as a legend. Obviously, those feats are not possible. Um, it just kind of paints Beowulf as this larger than life figure. I'll catch you guys in another video where we'll look at the fight scene and this paragraphing assignment.